Hello everybody, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Gold and Elliott Wave Stock Market. I've got Bitcoin and Ethereum today I'm going to update with you. I really would like to be able to do this at least once a week, but at the moment I've got some huge projects on and I have a deadline, I have to have those finished by 1st of September. So I have some really, really exciting stuff coming soon, but in the meantime, while I'm finishing these big projects, I don't have as much time during the week to do extra analysis. But here we are, once a fortnight, once a week, that's what it'll be until September. My Bitcoin analysis, let's have a quick look at where this is at. My monthly chart for Bitcoin, what's this doing here, let's get rid of that. Okay, so I expect that Bitcoin is currently in a primary degree fourth wave, the analysis is wanting to focus on the possible structure of it to see when it might be over. And if we look at the monthly chart, if we look at previous behaviour for Bitcoin, this second wave at primary degree within cycle one lasted five months. This first part of primary four lasted three months, but in its entirety primary four lasted 21 months. It was a lot longer lasting. Within primary three, we have intermediate two lasts one month, intermediate four lasts three months. So. I would expect primary four is going to continue a little bit further. Now I may need to move the degree of labelling in here down one. This might just be intermediate one and two within primary three. I'll consider that as well. But for now, it doesn't matter too much. Intermediate or primary three is a much longer than primary wave one. And primary three was 57 weeks in duration. So that's pretty good. Those proportions look really good. Okay, the structure of primary wave 4 at the daily chart level. Actually, before we go there, I've changed the end of how I'm labelling primary 3. I've got an ending contracting diagonal here for intermediate wave 5. This resolves the problem I had previously of seeing primary 3 over at this high, this high here, and then primary 4, A, B, C, and expanded flat. The C wave was just getting too long, and it just didn't have a really good look. So someone suggested what about an ending diagonal when I charted it and I pull intermediate 3 down here it has a beautiful fit and then when we get to the daily chart level it perfectly explains this upward wave here A, B, C subdividing as a zigzag because within, an, within a diagonal, within an ending diagonal, subwaves, all of the subwaves including the fifth wave must subdivide as a zigzag and Within a diagonal, the fourth wave must overlap first wave price territory. The only thing about this one, which isn't absolutely typical, is the fifth wave has fallen short of the 1-3 trend line. This trend line here. Most commonly, the fifth wave of a diagonal will slightly overshoot the trend line. That's okay. That's a guideline, not a rule. It doesn't have to be met. That's the difference, pretty obviously, between guidelines and rules. Okay, let's turn our attention now to the possible structure of primary four. And I'm doing this not to try and figure out how each wave within it moves. The purpose of trying to figure out an Elliott wave structure for a correction, which is really difficult, is trying to identify when it could be over. And then you know if you have your wave count at one degree higher correct, you should know the direction of the breakout when the, when the counter trend movement or consolidation is over. There are more than 23 possible corrective structures that primary wave 4 could be, but it looks like it may be unfolding as the most common zigzag, because intermediate A, from this high to this low, subdivides very well as a 5 wave impulse. I'm going to allow for a really small truncation here for minor 5. Let's just have a quick calculation and see how small this truncation is. $432.95. Okay, that's a reasonable truncation. It has a perfect fit though, and this triangle here for minor wave 4 fits perfectly with a little overshoot of the AC trend line for the end of the E wave. The fifth wave is short. Of fifth waves following fourth wave triangles can often be surprisingly brief in markets with high volatility. 
So I'm going to label intermediate A of primary 4 over here and it's subdivided as a 5 wave structure. So let's bring in an invalidation point for intermediate B. If I have the analysis of A correct as a 5 wave structure, then B should not move beyond the start of A. So let's bring this in. Now the problem becomes what structure is intermediate wave B can going to unfold as. B waves are the worst. They exhibit the greatest variety in form and price behaviour within all of the waves. There are more than 23 possible Elliott wave corrective structures it can be. Now really this is no different to normal understanding of how markets behave in the general field of technical analysis, not Elliott wave specifically. When price moves into a consolidation, you will have swings from support to resistance and back again. And when price swings from support to resistance, it usually does so in a really choppy overlapping manner. Elliott wave tries to give rules and guidelines to that structure and put it within a structure. Classic technical analysis is simply like look, going to look at identifying support and resistance and then waiting for a breakout. Elliott Wave can give you an advantage here in two ways. If you're focusing on the structure and you try to identify when the structure could be complete, then you may be able to anticipate the breakout before it happens. And the other thing is, the other advantage, if you've got your wave count correct at the one at one degree higher, you should have an idea with a high probability, if your wave count's got a high probability, of the direction of the breakout from the consolidation. So that's what advantage we're going to try and get here. So intermediate wave B can be more than one of 23 structures. I'm going to label it so far as a possible combination with a zigzag for W, a brief X wave, and either a triangle or a flat to unfold for Y. But it could also be a triangle, could be a running contracting triangle, could be an expanding triangle, or those, those are pretty rare. It could also turn out to be an expanded flat correction. Either way, at this point, I don't think the structure's complete. I wouldn't want to label intermediate B over at this high, even though we could then label primary 4 over here. I will consider that as an alternate, but the reason why I don't want to label it like that is if I label primary 4 over here, it's lasted only 10 weeks compared to 37 weeks for primary 2. The proportion isn't good. I could label a zigzag over down here for intermediate A of a bigger triangle for primary wave 4, that would be another alternate. So I may chart those and consider those. Either way, I don't think this pullback or consolidation for primary 4 is over. It's either going to just continue sideways or it's going to be a little bit deeper. Let's jump over to Ethereum now. I had worked through this chart and recorded the process, but sadly I had a software malfunction and the sound didn't record, so I've already updated this chart as well. For Ethereum, I think a pullback for Intermediate 4 may be over. Let's look at the weekly chart, but I need to move the labelling of it up one degree, so let's do that together. If I'm moving the labelling up one degree, then I need to move these corrections further down. unlink these let's bring in that primary four label go back to daily and move this all up one degree So that's how I do that with Motive Wave. And the other reason I think this is possibly over and it may be a primary degree is it fits beautifully into this channel. I'll squish this up so you can see how I've drawn this channel. And this is an arithmetic scale. So the first trend line from the end of primary 1 to primary 3 and then I've pulled a parallel copy down to sit across all of these lows and it perfectly shows where price is finding support in the last few days. So I think for Ethereum that pullback may be over. 
or it could continue sideways as a triangle to show you what I mean by that. Let's pop over to Bitcoin. Let's have a look at this monthly chart like this. So it could just be wave A. And I think also maybe for both of them, if they continue sideways as a triangle, then support will be retained at the lower edge of this channel. And at the end of it, they both have really good proportion for Ethereum and Bitcoin. If primary four continued sideways as a triangle, support could be retained here at this lower trend line. And they just have choppy overlapping sideways movement for weeks yet. I think that may be what's happening. Let's pop over and do some classic technical analysis together. Okay, it looks like volume is declining as price is moving higher. Sometimes Bitcoin behaves like that early in a new trend though. It doesn't always start its trends with strong volume. The long term average is positively sloped, the short and mid are negative and price is below the short and the mid. So that's inconclusive. But this is a bearish cross. I use a Fibonacci 55 day moving average with the 200 day moving average. So this purple one's the 55 day average and it's crossed here. That's the death cross. But the long term moving average is still positively sloped. So it's bearish, but not fully so. Okay, I've just extended the trend lines out for on balance volume. No signals here. Let's see if we can get this a little bit more horizontal across here to have better technical significance. No, that doesn't really make any difference. Let's leave it here. This trend line here for resistance for on balance volumes quite long held. It's been tested multiple times and the slope is quite shallow. So that's now got really strong technical significance. If we see on balance volume break above resistance here, that'd be a pretty strong bullish signal. ADX after reaching very extreme for this downward trend is now declining. It's still both, but above both DX lines. Indicates no clear trend. If it turns up again, it would be a downward trend and it would still be extreme because the ADX line hasn't pulled down below both DX lines. RSI and Stochastics both neutral. ATR declining as price moves sideways. Typical behaviour for a consolidation. Bitcoin is consolidating with resistance about 42,500 and support about 30,000. And so we'll use stochastics to identify when an upward string swing may be over and a downward swing may be over. Stochastics is in neutral territory. After almost reaching, getting so close to oversold down here, there's a nice hammer pattern here. If we see candlestick pattern reversal patterns at highs and lows while stochastics reaches over bought or oversold, then we can expect one swing within the consolidation may have ended and we'll expect the next swing. I expect this consolidation for Bitcoin may continue for a few weeks yet. Okay, that's Bitcoin. What about Ethereum? Moving average situation is um, overall bullish, but not clearly so. The long term average remains positively sloped and the short and the mid remain above it. But the short and mid are negatively sloped. Price is above the long but below the mid. So overall bullish but not fully so. Here's a nice morning doji star candlestick pattern. Let's note that. Oh, a morning star, not a doji star. There's a small real body on this middle candlestick. It doesn't have support from volume though, so that's concerning. For a bullish candlestick pattern, for, the, for a star you want the third bullish candlestick to have support from volume and this one doesn't. On balance volume is nearing some resistance that may assist to halt a rise in price. ADX is declining, there's no clear trend still for Ethereum. RSI is still well in neutral territory. Stochastics neutral. ATR declining as price moves sideways. It looks like Ethereum also is consolidating. So where's resistance and support for Ethereum? So resistance about 2900.
and support about 1700. Okay, so after that prior downward trend reached extreme, it looks now like Ethereum is also in a consolidation. It may continue for a few weeks. We'll expect swings from support to resistance and back again, and we can use stochastics to tell us when one swings over and the next has begun. Here, stochastics reaches overbought, price reaches resistance. Here, price reaches support, stochastics reaches oversold. Let's expect overall an upward swing for Ethereum to resistance about 2900 and if it gets up there, if ADX still indicates no clear trend, we may expect the upward swing to end, we'll look for a bearish candlestick pattern, won't always happen but more often than not it will. Here we saw a dark cloud cover, here again, uh, I think this is actually a bearish engulfing pattern, it's not very strong though. A weak morning doji star here, but a stronger morning star here. So the downward swing's over, let's expect an upward swing. Don't expect price to move in a straight line from support to resistance though. That's not generally how price behaves during a consolidation. It could be very choppy and overlapping. That's all for me today with your Bitcoin and Ethereum update. I will do my absolute best to try and update you once a week with this analysis but workload permitting. Thanks all for um, supporting this analysis and watching. Have a great day.